Hey guys, welcome to our weekly Friday video and sometimes we have a bonus video on Tuesday but today we are putting together a cheap DOS PC classic using a HP thin client computer. Console gamers got the NES and SNES Classic and most recently Sony released the PlayStation Classic but no such love for us retro PC gamers. In this video we will cover the hardware which is a HP T610 thin client that I picked up for $25 from eBay and also a 19 inch old school monitor. But I will also show you the software I like to use. We have the DOSBox Enhanced Community Edition as well as DOSBox Game Launcher and once set up we have a fully decked out DOS PC with pixel perfect graphics, support for 3D effects Voodoo and great audio with Roland MT32 and General MIDI sound font support. And to make it super easy for everyone to try out this project, I've put together a portable version that is ready to download. Just unzip it anywhere onto your Windows PC and you'll have exactly what is shown in the video ready to go and all you need to do is add your favorite DOS games. The software used in the video is also compatible with Linux but I'm more comfortable using Windows. Before we begin, a big thank you to members of the community that make all of this possible. We have the fantastic DOSBox team, Yesterplay80 with his enhanced community edition of DOSBox and Ronald who created the DOSBox game launcher. And there are many more that are responsible for improving the DOSBox experience with projects like the Pixel Perfect patch and the Munt MT32 emulator and we will check them out later in this video. So let's take a closer look at the T610. At the front we have two USB ports, headphones, microphone, hard drive activity LED, power button with a blue power LED. At the back of the unit we have DVI output, although this carries analog as well, so you can use a DVI to VGA dongle and drive a CAT monitor if you want. Display port, however, once again you can get an adapter, display port to HDMI and you also get digital audio through this port. Gigabit Ethernet, two USB 2.0, two USB 3.0, serial, two PS2 ports, and here goes the power supply. Opening the machine is really easy. In case you want to upgrade the RAM and storage, you gotta push here and then move this to the left side, and that comes off. And then the panels, you just slide them towards you for the top panel, and you can do the same thing for the bottom panel and then there's a little latch here you just pull that open and now we have access to the entire machine at the rear there's a latch here which you can open and this gets you access to the two memory slots out of the box uh, it came with a 2 gigabyte module but I added a 4 gig module for a total of 6 gigabytes of RAM I believe 16 gig is the maximum that this machine can handle. In terms of storage, my unit came with a one gigabyte flash module which was connected to the 44 pin ID port. You can use this port. There are various adapters to compact flash cards, SD cards, solid state, M.2. I did a video um, that shows some of these adapters. But there's a standard SATA port here, so I just hooked up a SSD. Unfortunately, my machine didn't come with an optional hard drive mounting bracket, which um, screws into here. You might uh, be able to jerry-rig something together. I didn't mind the hard drive being a little bit loose. You can also open this enclosure and you will often find a rather small uh, SSD in here, which then fits nicely. So here we are on the desktop. Let's check out how this project works. There's a folder, DOSBox. I will zip this up and upload it to our website. What you see here is 80 to 90 percent what you will get. I might add a few profiles uh, and whatnot. The DOS root directory is important. This is where you need to put your games. So I created a games folder. Uh, that's where you need to put in your games. I will only upload uh, demos and uh, share shareware versions so I don't get in trouble. And under MIDI stuff we have the Roland ROMs for the Munt emulator and also a few sound fonts that you can load. By default I'm loading uh, this one. Okay, we go back here and one directory higher and we need to run launch. So this is the DOSBox game launcher. 
There you go. This is what it looks like. There are three tabs here. Profiles, DOSBox versions and templates. Under DOSBox versions you can see I've got the Enhanced Community Edition installed. This one here we can actually remove this version because we're not gonna use it. Templates. Think of templates as configuring an, an entire machine and then using the DOS prompt to navigate around. I'll give you an example. So let's see. Let's say we want to play uh, a game that's aimed at a 386 with Roland MT32. So we double click on that profile. Let's run a directory command. So let's go for the Space Quest 3 demo. And let's see what the command is. I think it's that one. That's the Roland M232 emulator in action. Let's quit the game. Type exit and we're back in Windows. So what you do here is basically you configure a couple of machines to suit your games. Let's try another game. Let's try this one here. Maximum speed with a sound blaster 16 and a 3D FX Voodoo. Here we go, this is the attract mode of the 3DFX Tomb Raider demo and it uses the uh, Voodoo emulation with OpenGL acceleration and this is where having the integrated Radeon graphics comes in very handy. And I'll show you one more template, this one here. This is for newer DOS games that use uh, general MIDI. Doom is a good game to play, so I've got the share uh, version here, so let's check it out. And there we go, that's Doom in all its glory. Now you can change all the sound fonts of course. I will quickly show you that in a minute. But what next is looking at using profiles instead of just using So templates, configure machines and then you use the command prompt to run your games. I prefer this because I can play a, a range of games and I only have to configure one machine. But many of you will prefer to have the games listed here and then download the box art and so on. I'm only going to scratch the surface of what DOSBox Game Launcher can do. So let's add an individual game. Let's say Monkey Island Demo. DOSBox version and we can apply a template so I'm gonna go with this one here the 386 template reload settings so that's gonna apply everything for the pixel perfect patch the machine speed and so on and then under mounting all we have to do is find the executable of our game so in our case it's under games Mikey Allen demo and here's the executable if you've got a setup program like install or setup.exe you configure that here and that's pretty much it. So like I said, this was just a brief introduction, but with the existing profiles and templates, you can just right click, go duplicate and then modify your own template. So you should be able to figure this out quite easily. Now we're just going to talk a little bit about the DOSBox Enhanced Community Edition and what that brings to the table. So let's have a look at this one here. This one has Roland MT32 and a few other tricks. So if we click on display, this is the uh, pixel perfect patch. Now this is quite a, a technical patch. The bottom line is um, on an old computer the pixels were non-square and on LCDs they are square and 
that doesn't uh, go well together. It's like uh, fitting a, a round peg through a square hole. It just doesn't work. And what this patch does is it keeps the aspect ratio as close as possible to 4 by 3 but make sure that each pixel is the right size. So um, you will see less artifacts with uh, text and the picture will just look really, really nice. On that 19 inch monitor that I showed in the beginning of the video, uh, this patch works perfect. It will pick a resolution of 1280 by 1000 for most games that run at 320 by 200 resolution, but I already went way too much into detail. The bottom line is if you want a sharp pixel image with no distortion, um, this is the way to go. And what else have we got under audio? There are a couple of tweaks. Um, for example, here with the MPU, you can toggle between the MT32 emulator or fluid synth. And then under experimental options, here it points to the ROM files and here it points towards the sound font file. So this is where you can tweak those sound options. But this option here toggles between general MIDI, which is fluid synth, or MT32. We've got the uh, OPL3 Nuked emulator, which is a more precise emulation, and I tweaked some of the other settings, higher sample rate, and so on. So that's all ready to go. Also under display, experimental options here, you can configure your Voodoo. I recommend changing this to OpenGL and leaving the RAM on standard. That's what I used for the Tomb Raider test. And that's pretty much it. All the other options, for example, the cycle speed, you can just copy one of these templates and then tweak them to your liking. I've got one template here with the CMS Game Blaster sound. I'm a big fan of that. It sounds very unique, so definitely worth checking out. But in general, that's pretty much it. Now, this is all portable, so you can actually copy this onto a USB flash drive and run it on any Windows computer. There you have it. We took a $25 thin client that I got off eBay and we turned it into a really versatile DOS PC classic. The machine is powerful enough to also run some Windows games. We have connections for HDMI TVs, VGA CRT monitors and of course the classic DVI standard. These thin clients have no fan, so they're nice and quiet. They're also very energy efficient, and you can upgrade the RAM and the storage to whatever you like. Thanks to the DOSBox game launcher, everything is nice and user-friendly with a graphical user interface. And because of the DOSBox Enhanced Community Edition, we're getting pixel-perfect graphics, 3DFX Voodoo support, but also excellent sound, improved PC speaker, improved OPL3, and of course we can load any SF2 sound font. And we have the mighty Roland MT32 and CM32L emulation as well. So what do you think about this project? Very eager to hear your thoughts and your experiences with DOSBox. Please let me know down below in the comments. I will see you next week with our weekly Friday video, but do keep an eye out for Tuesday. Sometimes there will be a bonus video. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and if you haven't done so already, give it a like and click on that notification bell and I shall see you soon with another one.